evening, happy Easter, and welcome to the Tabernacle of Praise. We are so glad you're here with us today. It's going to be an exciting and life-changing day. On Sunday, May 4th, we're having a baptism service. Baptism is an outward expression of what the Lord has done inside of you. So sign up today in the atrium, and please fill out our friends and family invite sheet. We would love for your family and friends to be there to experience that special day with you. Mother's Day is right around the corner. On Sunday, May 11th, not only will we be honoring mothers, but we will also be having a baby dedication. If you have a baby that you would like to be dedicated to the Lord, please sign up today in the atrium or see Sister Renee for more details. On May 18th through 20th, we will be having our spring encounter. Minister Andre Van Zyl will be with us that week. On Sunday the 18th, we will be having two services, 10.30 a.m. and 7 p.m. On Monday and Tuesday, services will also be at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss this time of refreshing. Good evening. How's everyone doing tonight? You doing okay? Yes. Amen. Let's stand to our feet, if we will, tonight in this place. And uh, I'm glad you're here tonight. We're just excited about what God's going to do in this house. Amen. Yes. You expecting great things tonight, believing in great things tonight. If you will, just turn around and shake someone's hand real quick, even if you got to get out your seat. And uh, we're just going to come together and we're just going to glorify his name together in this place tonight. Let's just welcome him in this place tonight. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you that we can come into this house and to glorify your name, Lord. Lord, we just lift you up and honor you and praise you and give you thanks for who you are. Lord, we just ask that you would just touch us as we glorify you in this house tonight, Lord, that your name would be lifted up, that you would be exalted on high, O oh God. We give you all the praise and glory and honor for it. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him together. Hallelujah. To be saved is a bit more than just a prayer to pray, more than just a way to heaven. What does it mean to be his, to be formed in his likeness, know that we have a purpose, yeah. to be salt and light in the world, in the world, to be salt and light in the world. To be salt and light in the world, in the world. To be salt and light in the world. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hey. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so, say so. Hey, hey, yeah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so, say so. Oh, will that the church would arise? Will that we would see with Jesus' eyes? We could show the world heaven. Show what it means to be his, to be formed in his likeness. Show them they have. 
the perfect To be strong and light in the world, in the world To be strong and light in the world To be strong and light in the world, in the world To be strong Oh, come on, let the redeem Let the redeemed of the Lord say so Let the redeemed of the Lord say so Let the redeemed of the Lord say so Say so, say so let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so, say so. Sing, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. Yeah. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. Oh, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord, hey, let the redeemed of the Lord rise up, rise up, rise up, yeah, let the redeemed of the Lord rise up, let the redeemed of the Lord rise up, let the redeemed of the Lord rise up, rise up, rise up, oh, I am redeemed, I am redeemed, I am redeemed, hey. Rise up, yeah, and let the redeemed of the Lord rise up. Let the redeemed of the Lord rise up. Let the redeemed of the Lord rise up. Rise up, rise up. Let's all sing, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. Jesus, Lord, we magnify you, Lord, and we just realize, Lord, that it is not just enough, Lord, to proclaim who you are, but, Lord, we are called to go ye into all the world and to preach the gospel, Lord, to share the good news, Lord, to share what you have done in our lives, God, to share your goodness, Lord, with those around us, Lord, and we just thank you for it, Jesus, and we honor and bless you, Lord, we lift up your holy name. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 
We bless you, Lord. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to bless your name. I just want to make you glad. I just want to move your heart, God. To give you all I am. I'll sing it to him. I just want to bless. I just want to bless your name. Yeah. I just want to make you glad. Oh, I just want to move your heart, Lord. I just want to move your heart, Lord. Yes, Lord. To give you all I Come on, just sing it to me again. I just want to bless your name. I just want to bless your name. Just let him know tonight. I just want to make you glad. Oh, I just want to move your heart, Lord. Yes, God. To give you all I just want to bless
To worship you I live To worship you I live I live to worship you Oh Lord, that's why I breathe Oh Lord, to worship you I live To worship you I live I live to worship you Oh Lord, that's why I was created Lord, to worship you to worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship. Oh, with all that is within me, Lord. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Let him know, Lord, all I have is yours. All I have is yours. Give it all to you, oh God. All to you, oh God. Lord, all I have is yours. All I have is yours. I give it all to you, oh God. Give it all to you, oh God. All I am is yours. 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 Every breath, oh Lord. Everything, Lord, is yours. By your will. For your This place tonight, Father. Lord, I thank you for your presence, Lord. I thank you for all that you've done in our lives, oh God. Come on, can we just thank him in this place tonight? Come on. Has he been good to you? 
Has he blessed you? Has he been faithful? Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Lord, we offer ourselves to you in this place tonight. Lord, I place everything at your feet, Lord. Not just the bad, Lord, but everything, Lord. My finances, Lord. My home, my children, Lord. Even my desires and my wants, Lord, I place it in your hands, Lord, and say just, Lord, work in me so that my desires will become your desires, Lord. That my heart would become your heart, Lord. That what hurts you hurts me, Lord. What turns your stomach turns my stomach, Lord. Lord, I just want to be more like you, Jesus. More like you, Jesus. Oh. Come on, let's just glorify him for another moment in this place. You're worthy, Lord. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you, yeah. Come on, I don't want to get awkward in here, but I just sense His Spirit just speaking to us tonight. You know, it's, it's so easy to sing songs about how great He is. It's so easy to sing songs about all the wonderful things He's done. To say, Lord, we praise You, and Lord, we honor You, and Lord, we glorify You. For some reason, sometimes it's not as easy to sing songs that actually require sacrifice. To sing songs that say, Lord, I, I lay everything at your feet, Lord. Lord, by your will, Lord, for your pleasure I exist, Lord. Lord, I, I place it all in your hands, Lord. But can we just do that tonight? There's no greater way to make it about him than to say, here I am offering you me, Lord. Here I am saying I'm open and I'm being willing, Lord. Search my heart, oh God. Lord, search me, God. Look for wicked ways in me, Lord. Lord, remove those things out of my life, Lord, and lead me on the path of everlasting, Lord. Come on, can we just do that? Let's allow him. It's okay, Lord. We... We open and invite you, Lord, into our hearts. We open and invite you into our lives, Lord. Lord, we don't just sing songs about how great you are, Lord. But, Lord, we invite you to come in and change us. Come in and work in us, Lord. Lord, prick our hearts, Lord God. Work in us in the things, Father God, that need improvement, Lord. Work in the things that we have tried to maybe hide from you, Lord. Lord, let us just place it at your feet and say, God, I'm willing to give it all to you because I know when I place it in your hands, you're the one that can make it better. You're the one that can change things, Lord. You're the one that can make my life, Lord, to be lived out the way that it should be lived out, Father. That I would speak the things that should be spoken, that I would say the things that should be said, Lord. That I would walk in the path, Lord, that you've called me to, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord, I give it all to you, Jesus. I give it all to you, Jesus. I give it all to you, Jesus. All I have is yours. I give it all to you, Jesus. I give it all to you, Jesus. Oh, all I have is yours. Just open up your heart and cry. I give it all to you, Jesus. I give it all to you, Jesus. I give it all to you, Jesus. Lord, all I have is yours. I give it all to you, Lord. I give it all to you, Lord. By your
God, we just come tonight. We bring it all and give it to you. Our good, our bad, and our ugly. Our strengths and our weaknesses. Our ups and our downs. Places we're faithful and the places we're unfaithful. We just give it all to you tonight, God. Because it is for your will that we exist. We live to worship you. So tonight I pray, Father, that our lives would be a sweet-smelling fragrance in your presence. Not just on Sundays, not just on Wednesdays. God, help us not to be religious. But God, help us to have a relationship that changes us from glory to glory. From revelation to revelation. From understanding to understanding. God, we pray for the needs that are here tonight. Those that are sick, those that are, God, are weary, those who are challenged, God, those who are having issues in their family, finances, we just give it all to you tonight, God. We cast it on you because you care for us. We give you praise and thanks for the end result because we know that you even take the bad and you work it out for our good. And we give you thanks and praise for that in Jesus' name. And amen and amen. Praise God. Let's give him a good ovation here tonight. Praise God. And you might be seated in the presence of the Lord on this evening. Our ushers are prepared to wait upon us tonight for our worship and giving. And so we want you to just um, prepare yourselves now to continue in your worship tonight. God. Father, thank you for the privilege to return back to you to reciprocate the love that you've shown toward us. God, it is in our giving of our time, our talents, and our treasures that, that our real heart is revealed. And so tonight as we give, we give not grudgingly or compulsively, but we give cheerfully and joyfully because, Father, we know that it is with pleasure that we give to the kingdom work that others can receive the same message that we've received and their lives be changed as ours have been changed and we give you thanks and praise for this tonight in jesus name and amen amen god bless you in your giving tonight all to jesus i surrender all to him i freely Before we get into the message, remember baptism 
Uh, two weeks from now, May the 4th, we'll be having water baptism for all of those who have uh, dedicated their life or rededicated their life to the Lord. I believe we uh, are up uh, now about uh, 18 over the last uh, five weeks that have accepted the Lord as their Savior. Amen. And, uh, so we thank God for that. Amen. We thank God for that. And uh, by the way, um, in case you're interested, we did break our attendance record on Sunday after the uh, final total. We had 522 people here on Sunday. Amen. Praise God. Worship and celebrate our resurrected Christ. And so we want to continue to pray for those individuals. I know that uh, some of them are just passing through, but others of them are uh, coming to uh, finding a place to worship. And so we thank God for those who came on Sunday. And over the next few weeks, those who are interested will be back at some point in some time. And uh, also, uh, you know what God did here, but let me just give you an update on our church plant there in the Wheeling area. Uh, they uh, had a uh, hundred, and I believe it was 138 on Sunday, and they had 20 people give their life to Christ. Amen. It's God. And uh, I shared with you a few weeks ago the, the uh, complications of finding a building there. And uh, it's continued, and uh, we thought we had a school that was there, but they uh, then rejected us and said that uh, because of separation of church and state, and I told them, I assure you, I won't allow you to get in our business. Um, but that didn't work either. And uh, But I believe the Lord is helping us, and uh, we are uh, expecting to get keys to a building tonight uh, rent-free. Amen. It's not a shabby building either. It's a big building. It's a beautiful building. And uh, we thank God for that. And we're, so we're just, I want you to pray with me on that, all right? Pray that this does not fall through, but God will help us to secure this facility so that the gospel can continue there in the wheeling area. Amen. Praise God. Well, I just wanted to share with you a few minutes about that. Uh, also, on May, um, I believe it's May the 3rd. Is that right? Okay, May the 3rd, we're having a, a um, I don't know what it's called, a rummage sale uh, for missions. And as you know, we are going, and while I'm talking, I'll just tell you, we're going, uh, I'm going on the end of this month, I believe it's the 23rd. What is this, April? No, I'm going in May. The 23rd of May, we'll be going there, and we'll be uh, doing all of the legal work for them to sign over the hospital and all of the facilities and all of that uh, to us and, and those who are uh, supporting this ministry. And uh, so that's making progress there. And then also, we're, uh, as we said, we're going forward with the uh, building of the building there for the prisoners that are uh, transitioning back into society and uh, we can do that whole project for ten thousand dollars amen and so uh, that's phenomenal and and uh, so I believe God can help us to do that and uh, I believe this year our, our children's ministry is going to be going to and doing some ministry over there as well so it's going to be an exciting year uh, not just here but we're fulfilling our vision right Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Praise God. So thank God for that. Amen. Tonight I want to share with you just for a few moments out of the book of Romans, chapter number 8. And I want to read verse 16 through 18. Romans chapter 8, verse 16 through 18. And the Bible says there, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that 
the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Yes, we, we do have a witness. We have a witness on the inside of us that we are the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. We, we've been adopted, born again by His Spirit. Amen. We are part of the family of God and this enables us to know beyond any shadow of a doubt that we are connected, we are accepted, and we are forgiven. And we have a witness on the inside of us tonight of such. We are connected through Jesus, we are accepted by grace, and we are forgiven through the cross. Because we are God's children, we are heirs and, heir, uh, and heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ. And to fulfill, fully understand the meaning of this, we must first understand the difference between being an heir and being a joint heir. Uh, children are heirs of their parents, right? However, a parent can determine the level or a different portions of their possessions in which they are going to give their children individually. For an example, a parent might decide to leave uh, their house to one of the children and leave the Timex watch to another child. They can do that. And both of them have an inheritance or they are heirs. But you see, the difference is, there is a difference, and the difference is very a distinct difference between being an heir and being a joint heir. Because a joint heir gets the same inheritance. They share everything equally. Everything is equally. Whatever belongs to you belongs to the other. No one has more than the other. And as born-again believers, we are not just heirs, but we are joint heirs with Christ. And so we have the same inheritance as Jesus has. We, we, we have the same as what Jesus has because we are joint heirs with him. And what belongs to him belongs to us. We don't have more than Jesus has, but neither do we have less than he has because we are connected to him. We have access to everything that is good and perfect gift belongs to us. It's all ours. Everything in heaven has to offer belongs to us right now. Amen. He tells us in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and excellence. And so you see, because we are connected to Him, we have access. And because we have access, there is nothing off limits to us. Every once in a while, I, I uh, have the privilege of going to, um, to preach in some places, and, and they will have, you know, bigger churches will have a, a green room or they'll have a waiting room where that you'll go to, and, and in there, they'll, they, while uh, you're waiting for the service to begin, they'll have, you know, coffee or donuts, or they'll have something there to snack on and, and waiting for the service to begin. And, and you, you are able to get comfortable and prepare and, and all of that. And, and, you know, and it may not seem like a lot, but whenever you're in third world countries, that means a lot because you've got bathrooms back there. <laughs> Amen. And, and that means a lot. And so whenever my family travels with me, even though they may not be preaching that day, they are with me. And so they have access to the same place that I go. If my family can't go, then I don't go. Right? 
but they have access not because they're going to be doing the speaking that day but because they're connected to me they have access into that same area uh, you know frequent flyers are the same way yeah I kind of envy them because they you know they they go in that what is it the crown room or whatever it is and you can look in there and they got sandwiches and they got all this stuff and I'm humped up in a little old you know plastic chair waiting on the ride right and, and they're in there in the comfort and and all of that and and they've got everything and and so it is that with us we today we have access because we we not because we're entitled to something but we we are connected to someone who has given us the privileges and the benefits a man of kingdom and so we understand tonight as Christians we are connected to the one who has paid the price because of what he has done. He has incredibly blessed us tonight. Amen. And because of what he has done, we have these blessings and we have these privileges of being a child of God, being joint heirs with Christ. We are joint heirs with Christ. We share everything with him. We have access to our Heavenly Father's um, guest room, crown room. Everything that pertaineth to life and godliness has been given to us. Everything belongs to us. We have some great things available to us because of what Jesus done and our connection to him, right? So let's look at again verse 17 and if children then heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may also glorify be glorified together the latter part of this verse clearly states that we share everything including his suffering suffering is as much a part of the inheritance as reigning with him if anyone ever tries to tell you that, that walking with Jesus is painless, without resistance, without trouble, they are lying to you. <coughs> the Bible says those who live godly shall suffer persecution. He says it's going to rain on the just as well as the unjust. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all, right? And so we see that suffering is as part of reigning with him and inheritance as reigning with him is. And so when people try to tell you that that's not part of it, we've got to understand it really is. But please don't misunderstand me. There are some things that Jesus suffered for us that we so we wouldn't have to go through that. Amen. If we if if we want to know what those things are, all we have to do is go back to the cross. Go back to Calvary because he suffered the curse of sin on the cross that we don't have to suffer the sin and the burden of sin, right? He, he carried that, bore that grief. He carried that sin and the curse of the law that day was broken off of our lives because of his suffering on the cross of Calvary. On the cross, he suffered those 39 stripes and took our sickness and our infirmity upon himself that by his stripes, we are now healed. Amen. He nailed poverty to the tree that day. Amen. And when they put the crown of thorns upon his head, the curse that came upon Adam, where that he would now would work and and gain the food by the sweat of his brow, Jesus redeemed it as the blood began to pour down his brow. He redeemed us from the curse of poverty, amen, so that we can have a life of victory, praise God. So we don't have to suffer in that any longer. But there are some things that did not take away. We will be hated for his name's sake. We will be reviled, we will be persecuted, but be encouraged. Because if you suffer with him, you shall also have the privilege to reign with him. Amen. Jesus, just as Christ has raised 
uh, Jesus from the dead, he said he has also caused us to be quickened in these mortal bodies, that there is no grave that is able to hold us because he got up, we got up, get up on the inside of us. Amen. Because of what he did, because he was glorified, we have been glorified. There is a part of God's promise for us that in our inheritance, we can raise up, be raised up together and seated in heavenly places with him. That means that we are raised up above fear. We are raised up to the impossible becomes possible. And we see the burden lifted and the yoke destroyed and we experience total freedom in our lives amen if you believe that give him praise right there tonight he don't want us to be bound by the spirit of fear he said I have not given you a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind and so he has caused us to understand tonight that there is a soundness of mind that is for the believer, for that one who has trusted him, for that one that has been willing to suffer with him also will reign with him in a sound mind without fear, without anxiety, without worry, without being perplexed, but we can know the peace of our Father. Amen. And anybody can say amen to that until you're in difficult times, but it's in the difficult times that you understand the peace of the Father. Amen. Because whenever you got everything going your way, you don't have to worry about that. But whenever things are difficult... Whenever things seem impossible, you've got to know that the God that is inside of you takes the impossible and makes it possible. Amen. You've got to understand that, that he is the one that is the lifter of our head and he is our strength and our help and the very present help in the time of need. Praise God. And so he goes on in verse 18 and he says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. This verse clearly tells us here that the suffering we endure in our current situation is not comparable to the coming glory which shall be revealed within us. Amen. Now, there's another scripture that I love that it says the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Now, the scripture tells us here that this weight of glory shall be revealed where is it going to be revealed in us right so if this glory is to be revealed within us then how is this knowledge of the glory of the Lord going to cover the earth it's got to come out of us that glory amen that, that he has placed within us this glory that's not going to be even comparable to, to that suffering in which we went through. And so if, if you've gone through great suffering, what you've got to understand is there is a great glory that is coming into your life. Amen. You, with that greater glory because he said it's not even going to be able to be compared. So whatever measure in which you have gone through suffering and, and difficulty for the cause of Christ, you can fully expect a greater measure than that to come upon your life of his glory, of his presence to be in you. And when it is released, the knowledge of the glory will cover the earth as the waters are covering the sea. Amen. Now he, he tells us here that there is this revelation. In 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 17 confirms this by saying, for our light afflictions. How I many know sometimes they don't feel so light? <laughs> Which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding and excellent weight of glory. Amen. For this light affliction, 
It's the pressure that causes the blessing to come out. Oil is not picked off of a tree. Rather, it is pressed out of the olive. And the harder the press, the more oil pours out. The more sweeter fragrance the oil is. And it tells us here that we are going to have afflictions for a moment. It may not seem like a moment, but in eternity and in the hand of God, it is but for a moment. But it is not to kill us. It's there to work a far greater work of his glory. Eternal weight, weightiness, substance, something that you can hold on to, something you can feel, something you can believe in, right? It's not something that's just fly by night, fluffy, feel good for a moment. But it's something that will cause you to endure the test, the trials, the temptation, the hardship. But whenever you go against it, you've got an eternal weight of glory on the inside of you that says no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Greater is he that is in me than the world that has come against me. This weight of glory that is on the inside of me me. This knowing that I have of Christ is greater than the temptation. It's greater than the enemy. It's greater than the principalities that have been assigned against me. I will rise and have victory because this glory is greater on the inside of my life. Hallelujah. Psalms 126 and verse 5 says they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. All of these verses guarantee that there is a measure of our suffering is nothing compared to the measure of his glory. The measure of glory we receive will always outweigh or supersede the measure in which we suffer. Throughout God's word, we read about the principles of sowing and reaping. And I believe there are two major principles in which work uh, in, uh, concerning seed time and harvest or principles of sowing and reaping. And the number one is this, whatsoever a man sows, that will he also reap. In the natural, if you sow corn, you expect to reap corn. If you sow beans, you expect to reap beans. And this principle is true in the spirit realm. If we sow hatred, we will reap hatred. If we sow bitterness, we will reap bitterness. But if we sow love, we'll reap love. If we sow joy, we'll reap joy. If we sow forgiveness, we'll reap forgiveness. Amen. This is the powerful principle that whatever a man sows. And so if you want love, sow love. If you want forgiveness, sow forgiveness. Because you see, whatever we sow, we will also reap. This is a law that is irreversible and unbreakable. It's a law of God. Having said that, however, there is a seed that supersedes the law of whatsoever man sows, he reaps. There is a seed that is not bound by that law. When we sow in tears, we don't reap tears. You walking with me? We sow in tears, but we reap in tears. Joy. He gives us beauty for ashes. He gives us the oil of joy for mourning. So when we sow in pain, we reap in purpose. When we suffer, we reap glory. And I say that it's harvest time. 
Amen. It's harvest time. It's time for the harvest, amen, to come in. And we have sown one thing, but we're going to reap another. And our harvest is on the way. Glory to God. I said our harvest is on the way. We have sown in tears. We have sown in prayer. But we're going to reap a harvest of souls. Glory to God. They're coming in from the north and the south and the east and the west. The south cannot hold them back. And our sons and our daughters are coming. Our sons are coming from afar. And our daughters are coming from the ends of the earth. We're lengthening our cords. We're strengthening our stakes. And we're saying, God, we can receive the harvest. We are ready for it. Amen. Hallelujah. And the second law of sowing and reaping is this. The principle says that the seed is always smaller than the harvest. The seed is always smaller than the harvest. You can hold an apple seed in the palm of your hand, probably hundreds of them. But take that one seed, sow it into the soil and let it die and it resurrects, and when it resurrects, it has the potential of producing thousands of bushels of apples. Amen. Out of one seed. It has the potential of producing so much more after it has died than it ever could when it was alive. And so Jesus became the firstborn among many brethren. He was the seed that was placed into the ground and would die <laughs> so that we would have a harvest not just of one son but many sons and many daughters. Glory to God. That would come up out of the ashes of, of pain and hurt and rejection and the defeat of a, the first Adam and so we would be reconnected to Father God and we would have a relationship with him where we would rule and reign not just in the pie and the sky but in the here and the now. He has given us kingdom authority to rule and to reign and have dominion in the earth and be the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. Amen. Amen. You see, the foolishness of the enemy thought that he, in killing him, that he would do away with, with Christianity, with the kingdom of God. But what he did not know is the one seed being sown into the ground would die, would produce... <laughs> would produce a kingdom out of that one seed. He didn't have to deal with just one Jesus, but now he's got many sons and many daughters upon the face of this planet filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and able to do what Jesus did at any moment, at any time. We can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. We will cast out demons. We will declare the kingdom of God has come and the will of God is being done upon this earth. Hallelujah. Amen. And this law in the spirit is why the glory that comes upon us is always greater than the suffering that we endure. You sowed in suffering, but you reap in glory. And if you don't get more glory than you have suffering, then the law and the principle is not at work. But this is not a law that you and I or, or, or preacher or denomination has put in place. This is a law that God has put into place. So the only natural that we feel is our pain is worse. And we feel like it's worse whenever pain comes because it's our pain. And we know the weight of our pain, right? Right? And if you're not careful, you won't have sympathy for somebody else. When they have pain, because it's not your pain. Amen. That's the reason why if I go to the doctor, I want to go to one that's been through what he's needing to look at me for. Because I, I know we've got some great nurses and great doctors here, but I, I, I also watch some of them, and they yank you around and jerk you, and, oh, come on, you can do it, Dr. Kevorky. 
Amen. <laughs> I don't want none of that. But I want somebody that's been through what I'm going through, Jamie, because if they understand the pain, they can sympathize with me. But when it's your pain, you carry that pain and you know that pain because that you, 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 it's your pain. It's your tears. Amen. It's your moments that you've, you've cried out to God and asked him for your children's salvation. It's your, your suffering that you have sought his face for direction and for purpose and, and, and for his Holy Spirit to direct your path and, and to direct your family. It, it is your pain. It is your, your, your suffering. It is your situation in which you feel the pressure of. But I promise you tonight that God's word is not a lie. He is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Either all of his word is true or none of it is true at all. And I declare to you tonight that he promised us that the suffering that we are going through will not even compare to the weight of the glory that he will produce within our lives. Amen. And so I'm certain tonight, amen, that when we go through our overwhelmed with such emotional distress and it feels like we're going to die but I hear the word of the Lord saying the weight of this suffering will not even compare to the revelation of the glory and the power of God that will be revealed in your life amen I stand as a living witness before you that I endure the suffering at some points in my life, I, I haven't gone through a great deal, and I know there's others that have went through much more, but I've been through in places in my life when I thought my chest would explode. I've been under the pressure of, of a lot of things where that it even took, took and affected my physical body. But I want you to know that through it all, through it all, God proved himself to be faithful and to be true. Say, God, I can't take any more. Only for five more negative things to happen. I tell Renee, if anybody says anything stupid, I don't want to know it. If something's crazy going on, don't even tell me. Just let it get crazy all by itself. But I can't stand another thing. And somehow, out of the midst of that, God would bring revival. Amen. Amen. I was in such a place one time in a church and af after we come out of that and just talking about this weight of glory, after we come out of that season, God blessed us so that for two solid years we was in revival. People being saved on Sunday, people saved on Wednesday. Every time we go, people's lives being changed and people were coming from all over the place. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to tell you that I enjoyed it, but I enjoyed the glory. <laughs> I enjoyed the weight of glory that superseded the suffering, if you will, if you could call it that. But now there's a weight of glory upon us. And whatever measure of glory and God's presence that is in our life tonight is because of the struggles that we've gone through. It's because of the difficulties that we faced. It's because, if you will, the suffering that we have gone through in our lives. But he has revealed himself in glory. And I think it was Andre Crouch sung a long time ago. It's through it all. Through it all. I learned to trust in Jesus. I learned to trust in God. 
It's through it all, through it all, I learned to depend upon his word. How many know you can depend on his word tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, that's what I have for you tonight. Amen. Come on, Jamie. Play for me just a little bit. Maybe you're here tonight. Maybe you're going through suffering. Maybe you're going through some situations in your life. And you just say, Pastor, I just want God to, to do that work in me and for that greater weight of glory to come. Amen. I want to see him in a greater measure and a greater level. And if that's you tonight and that's where you're at, praise God. I know that suffering is real. And people can say, oh, that ain't nothing. But when you're the one going through it, it's a different story. Amen. It's real. It's, it's heavy. And so we give it all to him tonight. And we believe him that these laws and these principles that, that are irrevocable and irreversible, that they will come to pass in our lives. And, and the principle that supersedes it is that, that I will sow in tears, but I will reap in joy. Amen. I, I will do the morning of, day, of, of sorrow, but I will go, have the morn oil of gladness. And so I'm only mourn for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. So this is temporary, but glory is eternal. <laughs> Amen. The suffering is temporary. It's for, but for a moment, but his glory is eternal. It's forever. Hallelujah. And so I just want to say to somebody tonight, maybe going through suffering situations, that, that is temporary. But glory is coming. Direction is coming. Purpose is coming. His presence is coming to you to give you greater direction, greater understanding. Greater enlightenment, not only of who you are, but who he is in you. So that you can stand in that place. Not being embarrassed, not being ashamed, but you can stand in that crown room. You can stand in that place of, of, of dignitaries because you're in his presence. And he's the one that has taken you there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. you would just stand with me tonight for just a couple of moments let's just his presence has been very unique this evening that's what I love about God you can't put him in a box he just does his own thing but I just sense him here just hovering over us it ain't no deep shout or run but it's his presence is all the same here with us tonight and so if this word is for you it ministers to you it resonates in your heart tonight just put a yes on your altar by just stepping out and just coming this is what these services are for amen so that we the believers can seek him in a deeper level let him minister to us tonight so if you have need or a situation come, let's agree together and believe God to minister to you on tonight. I've had many tears and sorrows, had questions for tomorrow. 